New Year. Welcome to the Brave Kids Experience. My name is Miss Rosalie and I'm so glad you're here with us today. It's a new year, so you might have something called a New Year's resolution. Maybe it's working out. Maybe it's doing better in school. Maybe it's learning to play an instrument. Whatever it is, you need some encouragement. So right now, I want you to give yourself a round of applause. New Year, New Series. This month, we're looking at what it means to be someone who is responsible. Big word, important word. Did you know that Jesus said that there are two things that are more important than anything else? We're gonna learn what those are today. Remember this today. Responsibility is showing you can be trusted with what is expected of you. Well, let's jump into our awesome new worship song. You never turn away, you never leave my side And every time I call your name out just to find That you're already right here with me Never been alone I can trust you with my heart Cause this I know You are always faithful You love me from the start No matter what I'm facing I will trust you with my heart Trust you with my heart There are days when I feel I need a friend And then I hear your voice reminding me again That you're already right here with me Never been alone I can trust you with my heart Cause this I know You are always faithful You love me from the start Trust you with my heart You are more than able To lead me through the dark Your love is never failing I will trust you with my heart Oh, I will trust you with my heart No matter what may come No matter what I go through God, you are Never gonna fail me I will trust you with my heart no matter what may come, no matter what I go through, God, you are Never gonna fail me, I will trust you with my heart You are always faithful, you love me from the start No matter what I'm facing, I will trust you with my heart You are more than able to lead me through the dark Your love is never failing, I will trust you with my heart you with my heart Hey everybody, my name's Erica and if you're like me, you love playing games! I love sitting around a table with my friends Family, playing card games, board games, or any kind of game. I just got a new game in the mail today. Duga Pioneers! But I'll have to wait just a little bit because if you're also like me, you can't play a game until you know how. I feel like I owe it to the designers of this game to learn all the rules so I can play the game the way it's designed to be played. It's my responsibility. Responsibility is showing you can be trusted with what is expected of you. So let's check out these rules. The Doja Duga Doge Doge Doja Pioneers Instruction Manual. Rule number one. Each player should roll the enclosed red die to determine who goes first. The person who rolls the highest odd number 
should be the first player to begin the adventure. The person who rolls the lowest even number should draw a standard utility card. If the card is beige, they should go second. If the card is fuchsia, they should go last. If the card is orange or gold, all dice rolls are null and void and the process should be repeated from the beginning. Okay, okay, okay. Rule number 127. Should you run out of standard utility cards or action cards, you must pause the game until more cards are ordered and cards can be purchased from the website listed below? Expected delivery can be eight to 10 business days? Oh, this is exhausting. I mean, I get it. We need a lot of rules. Rules are important in the games and in life. But we'll learn in today's story. Maybe the rules don't have to be so complicated. Let me just pull this back to where it, oh, excuse me, sorry. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Matthew, Chapter 22, verses 36 through 40. The book of Matthew, the very first book in the New Testament, was written by, you guessed it, Matthew. Now, even though he was a tax collector and disliked by others, he became one of Jesus' followers. And years later, he wrote an eyewitness account of the things that Jesus said and did. For example, he tells us of the day that the religious leaders tried to trap Jesus with a trick question. Teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law? The religious leaders followed 613 different laws. They wanted Jesus to pick just one law so Jesus would get in trouble for leaving out the other 612 laws. But Jesus didn't fall into their trap. Instead, he took this opportunity to show everyone that following God doesn't have to be complicated. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your mind. This is the first and most important commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Everything that is written in the law and the prophets is based on these two commandments. Now, Jesus wasn't saying that the other 611 laws were wrong. He was only saying that if you look at every choice in your life through the lens of loving God and loving others, you won't go wrong. If you love God and love people, you will fulfill all the other laws. It's truly that simple. Often, it's in our darkest times that we find the most amazing opportunities to show love to others. In the past year, due to COVID-19, we've seen a lot of people put themselves on the line to help others. Doctors, nurses, medical workers, but we've also seen grocery store cashiers and delivery workers put themselves at risk of getting sick. So each of us could have the food and supplies we need. That's love in a big way. And you know what? Young people and kids have stepped up too. In Reno, Nevada, a college student named Jade Powell recruited a few friends to help elderly people buy their groceries during the pandemic. Within a few days, the idea took off. More and more volunteers jumped in to help shop and drop off groceries on the doorstep of older individuals. Within weeks, shopping angels reached all 50 states and other countries too, all because one student saw a need and chose to stop and show God's love. Sometimes showing love to others only takes a few minutes. In Columbus, Ohio, Taryn, who is nine, and Calliope, who's six, knew their elderly neighbor loved classical music. Because she was in isolation and couldn't go out, they took a concert to her front porch. For 30 minutes, they played a private cello concert just to brighten her day. It was a simple and amazing way to show love to others. Let's look at one more story. In Portland, Oregon, a high school junior named Julia Lynn quickly realized that with school closed, some kids and families would not be able to get enough to eat. She put out the word online in her community, requesting food donations. 
Within days, she received over 400 responses. Julia picked up each donation herself, and with the help of the school student government, she set up distribution centers where families in need could pick up the food. In helping provide food to hungry people, Julia was clearly showing God's love in action. God loves us so deeply. He's done so much for us, it's our responsibility to take that same love and show it to others. As Paul reminds us in the book of 1 Timothy, Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. Set an example for the believers in what you say and in how you live. Also, set an example in how you love in what you believe. Don't wait for somebody else to go first. Now is your time. Now is your chance to love God by loving others. how many rules there are in life. Look both ways before crossing the street. Hey, you, look both ways before crossing the street. No talking in class. No talking in class, children. No talk. You can't say something nice. Don't say anything at all. If you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. When you read the Bible, you'll see even more. There are hundreds of rules and commandments from God in here. And learning all of them would be really complicated, even if you studied them your whole life. But here's the good news. It doesn't have to be so complicated. Jesus said that all God's commandments, all of his rules are based on just two. Rule number one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your mind. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love God, love others. It's so simple. When you follow that rule, all the other rules are taken care of. After all, you're not always gonna have the rule book with you. So when you're in a situation where you're not sure what the rules are, just ask yourself, how can I love God through this? Or, am I loving other people? That should help keep you in the game. So here's the one thing to remember today. This is the most important rule for life. Love God, love others. Because really, it's more than just a game. If you follow Jesus, then loving God and loving others is your responsibility. But it's up to you. You can make it complicated, or just keep it simple. Mmm. Yummy. Eatsy, eatsy, eatsy. <laughs> See you next time. Hey, buddy. Hey, who's ready for a game? Which one do you want to play first? Guess who? Oh, I got that one. <laughs> Sorry? Oh, okay. If you'd rather, here. Well, should we risk it? Oh, yes, risk it! You know, we might as well. I have all day. Uno, por favor. Um, yeah, si, mi amigo. Well, let's just connect for... Oh, connect for! Oh, th okay, I got that. That's fun. No, no trouble. Oh, Papa Maddox, here we come! That's taboo. No, this this is taboo. I mean, for this kind of operation? Yeah, well, this is the one I have. Nah, get a clue. Get a clue? I, I, okay, will you just make up your mind what game you want to play? Oh, hey, John, when did you get here? What are you talking about? We've been having a conversation this whole time. No, 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 sorry. It's just John. He's about to uh, play some games, apparently. <laughs> it boggles the mind. Oh. What's that? Oh, that is just perfection! <laughs>Steven. And I'm John. And this is the So-and-So Show. It is the first show of the year. Did you make any New Year's resolutions this year? You know what? I did. You know how I always wait until the last minute to get things done? I do. It makes me nervous. Well, this year I've decided I'm not going to procrastinate so much. Well, that's great. How, how, how well are you doing so far? Well, I haven't started yet. Tomorrow seems like a good day. It always does.
Life is hard. No, it isn't. Life is easy. Ah, you know I'm talking about life life, not life. Come on, life. let's play it. Come on, man, it'll be fun. Uh, oh, unless you'd rather put it off until tomorrow. No, you know what? Let's play now. Oh, yeah! Oh, oh man, all the games got mixed together. Ah, well. It's Bible story no, time. No, 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 no. I can fix this. No. It's time to play the game of life. So-and-so style. What is happening, John? Life is happening, my friend. Now, what would you like to do first? Would you like to go to school or start your career? I will go to school first. That was easy. Okay, let's see where you go next. Oh, right. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, you just passed go. Collect $200. Whoa. Wait, is this the game of life or Monopoly? Yes. Okay. And, oh, seven, eight, nine. Oh, you got married. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Wife, she's in 2D. Did you say D2? Oh, you sunk my battleship. <laughs> this is not life. <laughs> 11, you know what that means? I have literally no idea. It means one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, oh, 11. It was Steven in the dining room with the candlestick. <laughs> ha! No, uh, I didn't do it. This is all mixed up, John. Oh, don't worry, I'll fix it. You need an operation. Here we go. <laughs> no, 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 no. This game is over, okay? It's, <gasps> <laughs> it's Bible. It's Bible. Oh! <laughs> it's Bible story time with Kellen. <laughs> Hey guys. Hello, Kellen. What are we talking about today? Well, today we're talking about responsibility. Really, our most important responsibility. What Jesus called the greatest commandment. Some of you may know that the Bible contains hundreds of laws or commandments from God. Well, a couple thousand years ago, someone asked Jesus which of God's commandments was the most important. And this is what Jesus said. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your mind. This is the first and most important commandment. Pretty simple, or is it? How do you love God with all your heart, soul, and mind? Oh, Praying a lot? Uh, reading my Bible? Going to church? Singing? All good ways to show God that you love him. And Jesus gave us another way. Jesus said this, this is the first and most important commandment. And the second, he said, is like it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Everything that is written in the law is based on those two commandments. So, how do you love your neighbor? Let's find out on... Love Thy Neighbor! Let's meet your neighbors. Now, a neighbor doesn't have to be someone who lives in your neighborhood. It can be someone you meet anywhere. Got it? Got, Got it. it. Then let's love that neighbor. Question number one. Brandon, how do you love your neighbor if they invite you to a party at their house? First of all, it's Steven. Um, but I can, I can bring snacks or sodas to the party. John. How do you love your neighbor if they give you a gift? Uh, send a thank you note? Ooh, good one. Yeah. I like that. Oh, thank you. Brandon, how do you love your neighbor if they shovel snow from your driveway? Okay, once again, Steven. I'm Steven. Um, and I would shovel their driveway next time. Oh, Kellen. Wow. wow, that's amazing. John, 
how do you love your neighbor if they spend all night playing bagpipes in the apartment above you? I, I, I don't love my neighbor at all. That's annoying. Agreed. Yes, very annoying. Brandon, how do you love your neighbor if they keep forgetting your name? <laughs> Funny you should say that because um, once again, third time, my name's Steven Kellen. We have met many, many a time and I would, I, I would say I'd probably get angry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kellen. John. How do you love your neighbor when they lose the comic book you let them borrow? <laughs> well, I don't lend them another comic, that's for sure. No way. How do you love your neighbor when they break a promise to you? Well, you know, I would insult them on social media. Yeah! Good idea. Yeah! Always. John, how do you love your neighbor when they take that last piece of pizza? <laughs> what kind of monster would... Are you kidding me? And that is the end of the speed round. Brandon, one final question. Do you love your neighbor? Uh, I mean, it was great that they shoveled the snow from my driveway and all, but they also forgot my name <laughs> many times. So no, no, I'm sorry, neighbor. I do not love you. John, same question. Do you love your neighbor? No way. <laughs> Play your bagpipe somewhere else, neighbor. <laughs> Annoying. You did not love your neighbor, you lost. What? Okay, well, what would the prize have been if we would have won? A million dollars. <laughs> what? Oh, no. <laughs> Let's meet your neighbors. Hey, how's it going? Huh. What's up? It's an attractive dude. Jesus did say, love your neighbor as you love yourself. You see, sometimes when it comes to loving people, it helps to put yourself in their shoes. Oh, oh yeah, I get it. So I think I know why you took the last piece of pizza. Because if you're anything like me, you get hungry all the time. He does. <laughs> and I like pizza a lot. Oh, that's great, isn't it? Yeah, I'm actually getting hungry right now. Hey, hey, you're not a monster. And I love you, neighbor. I love you. That was such a... And you know, I don't like it when somebody breaks promises, but if I'm honest, I mean, let's be honest, I can let people down sometimes too. And, and I want others to forgive me, so therefore, ipso facto, I love you, neighbor. <laughs> right back at you, Brian. It's, it's Steven. <laughs> Steven. That's what I said, right? Great job, guys. You love your neighbors. Awesome. Now, where are we at on that million dollars? Jesus said the most important thing we should do is love God. And the second most important thing to do is to love our neighbors. It's not always easy, but remember, our neighbors are people who make mistakes just like we do. They're people who are forgiven by God just like we are. And it's our responsibility to love them the way that we want to be loved. Thanks, neighbor. Yeah, yeah. See you, John and Brian. Yeah, that's weird. Back to you guys. It's a good game. Yeah, and we learned something too. Yeah, loving God and loving others aren't just suggestions. We're actually expected to love. It's one of our rules for life. We should keep track of those rules somehow. Oh, my friend, I am way ahead of you. Our number one rule for life is love God, love others. You know what? I'm not gonna procrastinate on that one. I'm starting right away. Love you, John. Oh, I love you too, Brian. It's Steven. Reveal the question. Ooh, what are things you're expected to do? Mm. Yeah. What are your responsibilities? You might be expected to brush your teeth before bedtime. Or help with chores around the house. Or it might be something even bigger, like... Oh, yeah. Hey, talk about it together. And we'll see you next time on The So-and-So Show. Yes! Are they just gonna, yeah, I think we'll stay. Stay? I have no idea. Handsome dudes. Thank you. Shh. Huh? Oh. School or career? I'm starting my career. All right. You're a waiter. Uh-oh. Don't tip the waiter. Steven, get me out of here before. Before? Aw, oh, man. You sunk my battleship. Oh no, that's my destroyer. 
No, Battleship, doesn't matter. This is not the game of life. Hey, it could be worse. You could be playing shoots and ladders. Bye. <laughs>
What a great start to 2021. Thanks for joining us. Hey, before you go, can you think of a neighbor, a friend, or a family member who you'd want to share this with? It's awesome when we can share about what we are learning with others and spread the word about Jesus. Hope to see you and a friend next week.